Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture series of design of steel structure on the platform of AKTU Digital Education. In this lecture, we will talk about the various loads and their combinations which we use for the design of any steel structure. Now, in this lecture, we will cover our discussion into following points. First, we will discuss about the various loads which we use or which we consider for the designing of any steel structure. We will discuss about dead load, imposed load, wind load, earthquake load, reaction load and thermal effects in the loads section, loads category. Okay. Then in the later part of this section uh, of this uh, lecture, we will talk about the various loads combination which we should consider for the designing of any steel structure. Okay. So, now let us talk about uh, various loads. First is dead load. What is dead load? When we listen dead load, what comes into my mind? What comes into our mind? Uh, our mind says that it is that kind of a load which is dead in nature. What does it mean? It means it is a kind of a permanent in nature. More specifically, it is the weight of all the permanent construction or all the uh, permanent uh, <coughs> sections used in the uh, steel structure or any structure. Okay. For example, if it is a house, okay, let me just show you. Okay. So, the weight of this beam, the weight of this slab will comes under the category of dead load. IS, our IS code uh, says in the clause number 3.2.1.1 that dead load should be assumed in design as specified in IS 875 part 1. IS 875 part 1 is also a IS code entirely dedicated for the uh, calculation for the consideration of the dead loads of various construction material available. Okay. Now, let us talk about the imposed load. What is imposed load? Okay. So, as we listen the word imposed load, it uh, what comes in our mind? Uh, our mind says that it is kind of a uh, occupant kind of a load okay. that is imposed on any structure. Okay. For example, let us look at our same building again and if there is a boy standing on this structure, then the weight of the boy will be come in the imposed load. Okay. Some people say it is a live load okay. and imposed load is a bigger domain and live load is a subset of it. Okay. Imposed load then some would say that uh, imposed load uh, must uh, consider other kind of a load, what kind of other load comes into the imposed load. So, our IS code says in the clause number 3.2.1.2 that it includes live load, crane load, snow load, dust load, wave load, earth pressure etcetera. Okay. So, etcetera means there are other uh, kind of a load which comes in the imposed load. We must uh, think uh, what kind of a loading which is coming on the uh, structure and what is its nature is it its nature is its nature is of permanent or temporary or occupant type of a or imposed kind of a then it will lie in the imposed load category okay so as there's a uh, dedicated code for the dead load also so dead load there's there's also a dedicated code for the imposed load also it is is 875 part 2 in the part 1 uh, IS 875 talkers, talks about uh, the dead load and in uh, part 2 IS 875 talks about the uh, various kind of uh, imposed load uh, that should we consider while designing of any steel any structure, any civil engineering structure. Okay. Also uh, though imposed load contains snow load, but snow load does not is not considered in part 
2 of IS 875. This dedicated part of IS 875 uh, for the snow load only that is IS 875 part 4. Okay. So, while uh, considering the snow load, uh, we will focus on the IS 875 part 4. Okay. We would not be require uh, these codes because in most of our uh, questions or most of the uh, problems which we will deal during this course, uh, in those problems uh, the values of dead load and the imposed load or uh, snow load, crane load, all kind of load will be directly given to us. Okay. So, now let us talk about the build load. What is build load? Uh, we see uh, some people uh, may consider that wind may not affect uh, that much or wind may not uh, have that much uh, significant effect on any structure as a load. Okay. Let me tell you uh, that uh, wind uh, there are so many structures which uh, get uh, deformed very uh, badly uh, because of this wind load. Wind, ha wind has very high uh, power uh, to deform or to destruct or even collapse our structure, wind, uh, wind is, uh, load is that much significant. Okay. So, how this wind load acts, how this wind load works? Okay. For example, there is a structure and there is a wind blowing from this direction. Okay. So, what this wind will do? This wind will try to deform our structure or this wind will try to push or our structure in this direction. Okay. So, if our structure is big enough, if our structure is wide enough, okay, then this force would be very high. Also, if the velocity of the wind is very high, then the force coming on this uh, building will be very high. Okay. This velocity will uh, depend on the various factor. Uh, okay. um, let me not uh, go into th that direction right now. Uh, uh, one may notice that while talking about the wind, I am just focusing on the horizontal level, on this very level. Why? Because this will only cause the destruction or the deformation in the building. If wind is going in that direction, then this will also cause deformation and destruction, but the deformation or the destruction will be because of not this component will be, it will be because of the horizontal component of the wind. Okay. So, while talking about the wind load, we consider about the horizontal component of the wind or the force exerted by the horizontal component of the wind. Again, in the second point, what I discussed, I told that dependency of this force that is coming on the structure because of the wind will depend on the velocity of the wind, how fast wind are blowing in for, uh, for example, there is a storm going out. Okay. So, in that storm, the wind forces will be very high. If there is a normal uh, breeze is blowing, then in that case, the force because of the wind will be lesser. Okay. So, velocity of the wind will increase as the velocity increases the uh, wind force will also increase uh, and then the shape of the building bigger the building more the force smaller the building lesser the force okay then the location of the building okay location also matters for example there is a building and there is a big mountain in front of the building then on this building the effect of the wind from that direction will be very less because of the positioning of the mountain because there is a obstruction in the path of the wind. Okay. So, location of the building re, uh, also uh, matters a lot. As we discuss that there is a dedicated code for the dead load and the imposed load, uh, in the same sense there is also a dedicated code uh, for the wind load as well. It is IS 875 part 3. Okay. Now, let us talk about the uh, designed wind velocity. Okay. Uh, this uh, particular topic uh, uh, definitely contains a question, a problem okay, which we will discuss uh, by the end of this module or uh, I think around se in 7th or 8th lecture of this lecture series. Okay. We will try to calculate uh, 
the wind pressure uh, on a some building okay we'll uh, cover that problem in our later lectures okay so let me uh, give you a glimpse uh, how we will uh, going to perform or how we will going to calculate the wind load that is coming on the building okay so to calculate the wind uh, pressure on the building we must know the velocity okay or the design velocity on the building which is going to impact okay so to calculate the design velocity we must uh, know the basic wind velocity okay what is uh, design wind velocity from this equation we can see that design wind velocity that is vz is proportional to the vb vb is what basic wind velocity the ba uh, value of basic wind velocity will be given to us in the questions and there are some coefficients in this equation we can also see there is k1 k2 and k3 k1 is basically indicating the risk okay how risky uh, that load for the uh, building also how risky that load can be for the building okay then k2 indicates the coefficient based on the terrain height and the structure size size of the structure okay k2 combines all the uh, combines all the combines the effect of all these three uh, parameters in this equation okay then talk about the k3 k3 incorporates the uh, effect of to topography okay while uh, getting the design wind velocity okay so if we somehow calculate this vz by knowing this k1 k2 k3 and vv we can calculate directly uh, putting into this equation the design wind pressure okay so this will be the pressure through which we will design our structure for example there's a building and we will get this value of p z okay okay so this kind of a structure we have already designed in our uh, structural engineering courses okay so uh, we if we are provided this value of pz we can easily design this kind of a structure okay so uh, we will deal uh, with one problem in the later part of uh, this module uh, and try to calculate this value of pz or the wind pressure now let's talk about the another uh, kind of a load that is the earthquake load which uh, we must consider while designing of any structure okay so what is uh, earthquake load or how does it work we all know that uh, earthquakes uh, is the reason um, or earthquakes occurs because of the movement of the tectonic plates for example there are two tectonic plates and because of this sudden movement there is a shock wake appears and which that travels through the surface of the earth okay this shock wave is basically a form of energy okay what is moving in the form of shock wave the energy is moving okay in the form of shock wave and when this shock wave for example there is our building okay and it is fixed over here and this is earth this shock wave is moving like this okay i am not drawing uh, this uh, in that uh, manner in which i should be but uh, for uh, understanding purpose let's say that this shock wave transfers its energy whatever comes in the path of the shock wave in this case our building is coming in the uh, path of the shock wave and this shock wave will transfer its energy to the building and if our building would be able to absorb this uh, energy if our building would be able to uh, dispose or uh, completely effectively absorb this energy uh, then there would not be any destruction okay so somehow we have to design our building to absorb this energy okay so uh, this is not uh, very much in to the domain of our uh, this particular course uh, it will be discussed in uh, uh, different courses like earthquake engineering and all okay 
So, uh, we will not go into much deeper into that. Uh, now, let us see uh, what our code says about the earthquake load. Our code says that the earthquake shocks can cause movement of the foundation. We can see that uh, from this example, very example, that uh, in other point, another point that the total vibration may be resolved into three mutually perpendicular uh, directions. Okay. <coughs> that shock wave that is coming and that is striking to the building will definitely have two components. For example, let us say this is x component, this is y component and there will be a z component. Okay. So, that z component will be uh, in the upward direction against the gravity and x direction and y direction will be in the up, uh, at the horizontal level. So, while designing uh, the structure or while uh, considering the earthquake uh, loading, we fo mo focus more on the x uh, energy uh, along the x axis and energy along the y axis rather than the energy along the z axis. Why we do that? Because um, what this z axis is doing, this z axis is doing uh, that if it is in upward direction then it is into, uh, reducing the weight of the structure and if it is downward direction then it is uh, increasing the weight of the structure. And we have already designed our structure uh, for the dead load and for the downward load, but we uh, generally uh, do not uh, uh, go for the horizontal kind of a loading. Okay. So, the more impact will be because of x component and y component. Therefore, it is advised to resolve the total energy or the total force into three mutually perpendicular direction. The response of the structure to the ground in the, uh, let me read about the third point. The response of the structure uh, to the ground <coughs> is a function of the foundation soil size and the mode of the construction and the duration and the intensity of the ground motion. Duration and intensity basically indicating that total amount of the total amount of energy that is being transferred from the earthquake to the building. Okay. And, uh, but obviously, we can uh, really understand that uh, the response or the vibration or the effect of the structure because of this earthquake loading will be uh, a function of fun uh, type of the foundation, soil, uh, which kind of a soil we have, which kind of a structure uh, we have or which uh, the mode in which we have constructed. Okay. As we have seen that there are various dedicated codes for the different kind of a loadings. Therefore, there is also a dedicated code for the earthquake loads as well. Also, uh, in this code, uh, there are mainly two methods which are focused uh, for the design, uh, for the computing of the seismic forces. First is the seismic coefficient method and second is the response spectrum method. Okay. Now, let us move uh, to the erection effect. What is erection? So, uh, erection effect or the erection loads are that load. For example, there is a uh, construction is going on and uh, there is a uh, storage material, there is a construction material uh, which is being stored in the building. So, we generally when we design, uh, we go for the dead load that is coming on the structure, we go for the imposed load, live load uh, coming on the structure. But while construction, the dead load coming uh, because of the storage of the uh, construction material, cranes and uh, other uh, uh, erecting equipments. Okay. So, the weight because of that or the load that is coming off because of the storage and the occupancy of those material comes under the erection effect. So, in clause number 3.3, .3, our uh, code says that all loads uh, that proper provision should be made uh, for the storage of such uh, material or the construction equipments. Okay. So, these are the few provisions which are mentioned under the clause number 3.3 .3, that proper provisions shall be made including the temporary bracing to take care of all the stresses developed during the erection. In the other point that I, uh, our code says that dead load, wind load and also such part of the live load as would be imposed on the structure during the period of the erection shall be taken as acting together with the erection load. For example, if you are constructing the building, it is a half way done and if you are uh, putting some construction material over there. So, while uh, analysis of this part or the under construction part, you must consider the combinations of the dead load, live load, wind load and this erection load as well. Okay. And the last part 
we see that the structure as a whole and uh, all parts of the structure in conjugation of to the temporary bracing shall be capable of sustaining this load during reaction. You build you building is under con un, under construction. Therefore, there will be some temporary uh, supports that would be provided. So, these temporary supports must be able to support the erection loads. Okay. Now, let us talk, uh, talk about the temperature effects. This is a very uh, important uh, from the designer point of view uh, in the any steel structure, mostly in the steel structure. As we all know that uh, steel is very sus susceptible or very much, uh, very much uh, affected, it can be uh, easily affected by the increase or decrease in the temperature. Uh, for example, let us for example, let me draw this here only. Okay. There is a beam and there is a column, these all are of made of steel. If we will increase the temperature of this system, then uh, or increase the temperature of this beam only, then this will beam, then this will, then this beam will try to expand. And while expanding, this beam will produce some force on this very column in that direction. And because of this excess force, Okay, there will be a moment okay, on this column. So, through this example, we can see how this uh, increase, its increase in temperature is incorporating uh, some forces in our structure. So, there are various uh, places uh, in India also, where uh, the temperature variation is very high. For example, in, if I talk about the Lucknow only or in the uh, northern plain of India, we, uh, we can see there are many places that uh, the temperature may uh, uh, go up to 45 degrees uh, Celsius in summer only and uh, in winter during winter night, uh, the temperature may go up to uh, 0 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, this is this huge variation will definitely cause uh, this kind of a problem and while designing any uh, steel structure, we must consider that various temperature effects and these uh, different forces which will come uh, into the picture because of the temperature. So, there are few points which are made under uh, clause number 3.4. Uh, let me read this. Uh, that expansion and the contraction due to the change in temperature of the members and the elements of the structure shall be considered an adequate provision made for the such effects. Okay. In the second point, the temperature range varies uh, different localities under different diurnal seasonal conditions. Okay. Depends uh, like uh, in example, what I said that there is a huge temperature variation in the winter, in the summer also. Also, uh, there are so many places in India. Okay where the temperature variation is so huge is uh, very large in uh, in the day only okay during uh, the mid or uh, during the afternoon there is a very high temperature and during the uh, late night or uh, in the night uh, the temperature drops uh, at a very low level okay so in those region we have to uh, the frequency of these stresses coming uh, or going will be very large. Okay. The ray, uh, let me read the next point. The range of the vari uh, variation in temperature of the building material may be appreciably greater or lesser than the variation of air temperature. Okay. So, what does this point is indicating? This point is, is indicating that we must consider uh, the temperature difference between the air surrounding and uh, the, uh, the building. Okay. Uh, temperature and is influenced by the condition of exposure and the rate at which the material composting, uh, composing the structure or absorb or the structure absorb or radiate heat. Okay, it is uh, very much clear to you. Uh, I uh, in the next or uh, the last point, it is indicated that uh, we must consider. Uh, that effect also uh, when uh, for example, there is a room and in your room there is a AC and uh, the outside surface of the beam will be subjected to direct sunlight, direct heat. Okay. So, this temperature variation will definitely cause some stresses in the structure and while designing any structure, we must consider these kind of a, uh, things also. Okay. Now, let us talk about the various load combination which are uh, suggested by the uh, IS code under clause number 3.5. So, in load combination, uh, IS code says that, that uh, we do not design building by uh, targeting single load. We do not design uh, uh, building uh, 
um, by targeting some other load only. Okay. We design building by combining the effect of all these loads and picking out the severe most combination. Huh? Okay. Uh, that combination which is causing the most stresses in the building through that stress value we design our building. Okay. So, our IS code says that the load combination for the design purpose shall be those that produce maximum forces and effects and consequently maximum stress and deformation. Okay. Following combinations are appropriate and partials uh, are used with appropriate partial factor of safety. Okay. Uh, IS code uh, suggests following combinations and says that use this combination with appropriate partial safety factors. Okay. In first combination there is a dead load and imposed load, in second combination there is a dead load, imposed load, wind or earthquake load, in third dead load, wind load or earthquake load, dead load and erection load. There are two things to be observed that dead load is always there, dead load is always there means there would definitely be a dead load and uh, there is one more thing to be observed that wind or earthquake load means either wind or earthquake. I will discuss it about in our next lecture. Okay. Uh, let me uh, stop it here only and we will uh, go through this again in our next lecture. Okay? Thank you.